If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. We all watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder? Okay, hi, I'm Bill Olson, and this is the last episode of 9-11 was an inside job for this year. We start season four. I've only been doing it since 2007. And uh, right now we're only about nine and a half months away from the 10th anniversary of 9-11. I think things are coming unraveled for the, the official story. Everywhere they turn, they're finding evidence that contradicts the official story. NIST has changed its story three times to match the changing evidence. The bottom line is the government story is going to be exposed, and they're mounting a full court press to, you know, curtail information exchange, this Julian Assange thing with the WikiLeaks. Think about that. They're trying to scare everybody, saying that's terrible. Oh, how terrible it is that those things are released, and this guy ought to be prosecuted and everything. The fact of the matter is what he released reveals terrible wrongdoing by the United States, and nobody's talking about that. WikiLeaks is a good thing. Anybody that says different is un-American. I'm going to throw that word around. They, they throw it at us enough, but I'm telling you right now, if you don't question the government, especially when you have the evidence in your hand, then you're a sack of you know what. Okay, well that's not very professional of me to say that, but um, the other thing is, have you heard about 900 Walmarts and uh, uh, stretching out to uh, 10 times more little stores all over the country are going to have big monitors with Janet Napolitano on it telling you, watch your neighbor. Watch everybody in the store. If you see somebody in the store doing something wrong, report it. Report your neighbor. Report, report. Yeah. So I'll tell you, I'm going to play a little cut here that I've played before. It's David Chandler and the terrorism scam. He's going to explain to you why you're a fool if you go along with the terrorism scam. It's, I mean, aspirin kills more people. We should spend a billion, I mean, spend, oh, let's, let's make homeland aspirin security. More people die from aspirin in the United States every year than terrorism by far. And yet, we don't search people for aspirin getting on an airplane. I mean, oh my God. Anyway, go ahead and play that when you get it keyed up. David Chandler, The Terrorism Scam. My name's David Chandler, and I have a few things I want to say about terrorism. Um, this is something that has annoyed me for quite a while to even uh, talk the language. Um, I don't believe we have a terrorism problem in the world that's very significant, and I definitely don't think there's anything justifying a war on terror. I think it's a scam. Um, and I want to go to some statistics here uh, to back up what I'm trying to say. Up until 2001, uh, we didn't even have a classification for terrorism in the cause of death in the mortality tables. So if you look up mortality statistics prior to 2001, they don't even list terrorism. Uh, basically, terrorism is a form of homicide, and uh, up until then it was just considered homicide. But as of 2001, they actually created a new classification. If, if it's, it's the, the designation is U01 in the official ICD, that's International Classification of Diseases, Code for mor Mortality and Morbidity. And U01 is the classification for homicide associated with terrorism. Okay. 
Now, in 2001, of course, there were a lot of terrorist deaths uh, for U.S. citizens. Namely, 2001, they list 2,922, all related to 9-11, all of them occurring on 9-11. In 2002, they list one. Now, uh, that was also indicated that it was aircraft related, so I don't know if it was perhaps like one other uh, temporary survivor from 9-11 who died over the year into 2002, or if this was a separate incident, so I really don't know. 2003, zero. 2004, zero. By the way, I'm going to pause there a second. Anthrax, you all probably re remember the anthrax uh, scare and so forth. Well, it says we had um, the CDC reported 18 confirmed cases, five suspected cases, and a total of five people killed by anthrax in 2001. Uh, notice something is those are not included in the terrorism statistics. So here's uh, deaths by uh, something that was an agent that was, as far as I'm concerned, as uh, qualifying of uh, being called terrorism as what happened on 9-11 and yet those were not considered, they were not tabulated as deaths by terrorism. Um, so I don't know why those didn't get counted. I also don't know why the anthrax situation didn't get investigated. Uh, it was pretty clear that it came out of US weapons labs and therefore one would tend to suspect that it would be inside people and there's probably fairly few people with access and so if anybody wanted to go down the list and figure out which one of those people was involved it would be a pretty straightforward investigative type of a thing so I have no idea why that was dumped unless it was somebody inconveniently close to somebody in power who knows okay in 2005 uh, they changed the definition of terrorism and um, and they changed the agency that reported it. So the statistics initially go from 2001 to 2004. In 2005, uh, I'm not quite sure, but they shuffle things around and so now we have 56 deaths due to terrorism in 2005 and 28 deaths due to terrorism in 2006. Well, uh, here's a breakdown of where the terrorist events occurred in 2005. One, now, by the way, these are terrorism deaths of private U.S. citizens, and it's listed by the country in which it occurred. Afghanistan, one, this is 2005. Egypt, two, Iraq, 47. Israel, Gaza, and West Bank, one. Jordan, four. The U.K., one. And the U territorial United States, zero. Okay. Uh, 2006, there were 28. Uh, of those, Afghanistan, three. Iraq, 22. Israel, Gaza, and West Bank, one. Pakistan, one. Thailand, one. Territorial United States, zero. So in other words, there's only one death since 9-11, uh, and that may have been related to 9-11. It's unclear only one death of that entire time which is a terrorist event or terrorist death on US soil um, which is sort of interesting uh, how do you justify a war on terrorism with those kind of statistics okay seems like the moral of the story is stay away from Iraq that's where these terrorist events are occurring now supposedly there's some kind of a criteria where these are private citizens as opposed to um, officials and with all the private people we have as contractors and so forth I'm not sure how uh, exactly they determine which ones are terrorist deaths and which ones are, are deaths by being too close to a war that's going on so that seems rather misleading in itself for comparison let's look at some other causes of concern here are some annual causes of death in the United States. Uh, tobacco, 435,000 per year. Poor diet and physical inactivity, 365,000 per year. Alcohol, 85,000. Microbial agents, 75,000. Toxic agents, 55,000. Motor vehicle crashes, 26,000. Now catch this one. Adverse reactions to prescription drugs, 32,000. 
suicide 30,000 <coughs> me suicide 30,000 incidents involving firearms 29,000 homicide 20,000 sexual behaviors 20,000 all illicit drug use direct and indirect 17,000 non-steroidal and anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin 7,600 okay should we be having a war on aspirin uh, thousands and th thousands of times more um, deaths due to aspirin than due to terrorism in the United States since 2001 I looked up uh, snake bite because initially I was that was the first thing I looked up actually I was thinking you know terrorism is way down there with snake bite but turns out there's 50,000 snake bite deaths per year worldwide and uh, most of those are in Asia uh, but still 300 to 500 per year in North America so that probably you know, I'm sure that includes Canada and Mexico as well but still way way higher than what we consider so threatening to our um, well-being that we declare war on terror and by declaring war on terror what it's really doing is it's putting a war on the US population it's taking away our civil liberties trying to protect us from this non-existent threat so it's basically a rationale to ratchet up um, um, you know the kinds of measures that limit your freedoms and uh, or as if you if you get the least little bit out of line uh, somebody is afraid you're going to be a terrorist or something okay so go back and look for a second you know that um, homicide rate 20,000 in the US right so another moral of the story maybe we should build a border fence but it should be a border fence to keep the US murderers in protect our neighboring countries from this in incredible homicide rate uh, that's a way bigger threat than trying to build a border fence to keep um, you know dangerous aliens out okay so uh, terror if you just think of the word terrorism terror is a condition it's a state of mind it's something that the person who perceives it is uh, it's basically a statement that the person uh, perceiving this event is in a state of fear or is terror is a state of fear and the solution to terror is quit being terrified of a non-existent threat or virtually non-existent threat way down way way below snake bites way way down below lightning strikes something which is uh, something has been conjured up with the express uh, purpose of limiting your freedom and um, exerting control over you so um, there you have it that's my opinion on what happened on 9 -11. so <clears throat> why do you suppose they have to limit what you can say and what you can hear and what you can observe why do you suppose they have to curtail your access to the internet it's because you find out what's really going on, and then their scams and lies fall to pieces. Um, a good example is Jesse Ventura in his show Conspiracy Theories. I mean, he really struck a nerve with the government when he had, uh, it was the show on the FEMA camps, the police state FEMA, FEMA camps, and uh, a lot of people didn't believe that we had concentration camps to hold American citizens but they're high tech they're the highest tech prisons built in the country and there's three of them in Oregon there's uh, you know I think six of them in California uh, anyway that's for another another show the point I'm saying though is uh, getting this information out and actually doing the research 